My guest today is Andrew Cordell. Andrew is an American entrepreneur. He is a wealth strategist. He is a very in-demand speaker. And he is the founder and CEO of Money Is, uh, which, as you can probably tell from the title, is all about money. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Hey, I'm excited to be here. I, I, I love talking about money and crypto. Yes, indeed. Well, I think to begin with, you know, you're kind of, you're a slightly unusual guest for me. So I'm, I'm really excited sure. to have you on um, just because you're obviously uh, very well versed in uh, the esoteric world of, of money and I suppose wealth creation and, and the idea of holding on to your wealth. And I know you, you have um, interest in crypto and NFTs as well. But look, let's start yeah. at the top, Andrew, please uh, give the listeners a, an introduction to yourself and what you do. Yeah, I mean, uh, quickly, I, I'm a, uh, probably you classify as a serial entrepreneur. And uh, my partners in here, we own about 20 different companies. It's a, a billion dollar uh, enterprise uh, we run here, um, close to about 1,000 employees total. And, and um, um, I, I've been teaching, I taught on wealth uh, money um, for six years straight um, uh, on stages all around the world. That's how I got to speaking in New Zealand and speaking in Australia and Singapore and all over the world. And the topic was on wealth and wealth creation and, and money. And um, of course, that kind of, as that happened, that led me down the road of cryptos and NFTs and so forth. And um, so I've been spending most of my life talking about money, wealth creation, et cetera. And, and uh, I love I love everything about it. My In my office, you guys can't see all of it right now, but surrounding me is, is all kinds of uh, money and coins. And uh, right here is a old ancient, oh, what is this one? Uh, 15 BC uh, coin. And that was buried, found in tombs. Uh, so I love collecting money and, and uh, ancient coins and so forth. Um, but uh, the new age of crypto and NFTs is something that's extremely fascinating to me. Well, I, I can see, Andrew, if you, you know, just with all the little uh, pieces uh, around you, uh, yeah. you're obviously a, a collector, which would make you um, a prime candidate to be a, an NFT collector, right? <laughs> NFT, yeah, for sure. That, that immediately qualifies me almost. Well, look, so I'm excited to talk a little bit about uh, crypto and, and NFTs with you, but I, I'd also just love sure. to get some of the kind of the, the, the high end, um, I suppose, knowledge and wisdom or, or your point of view on kind of money and, and wealth and, and yeah. you know, a, as a concept, because I know that's your kind of uh, specialist area. So let's uh, just anything you want to share, you know, why is money important and why is it kind of a, a difficult subject for uh, a lot of people? Yeah, I, I love talking this, on this topic um, just because uh, I spent so many years teaching on it and um, you know, first of all, I think that especially when you talk about first generation people that are kind of creating wealth for, and, and what I mean that, that is, you know, they're the ones that are kind of going out uh, and their parents had jobs and 401ks and et cetera. And then you had this like new, which was me, it was me, this kind of the, the children are saying, wait a second, I don't, I don't, that doesn't even look like it's actually even working for you guys. <laughs> I don't want to go do that too. And, and I think because of that money sometimes has a bad connotation. And there's a, a, a lot of money is truthfully psychology. Um, it's right between your ears. And subconsciously, a lot of times we're programmed that money's a bad thing and money is evil and money, uh, you know, uh, causes harm. And, and, and growing up, when you kind of program that way, it, it distorts your viewpoint on money and it makes it very difficult to actually acquire money. Um, saying that, as I, as I taught about money and wealth, um, what in the whole, re whole reason I started the money is um, show um, is to help people define why is it you want money? Like, what does money actually mean to you? Um, because when people just uh, casually say, I want financial freedom, I, uh, I want uh, houses and car, whatever it is, right? It's too, what I found was uh, it doesn't provide you enough um, internal grit to pursue and actually acquire the money because acquiring money is a difficult process. And uh, entrepreneurship is a difficult process. And when you don't understand why you're actually trying to truly get it, um, your why or your North star is off and you're not following that. And it, it, it makes it very difficult for you to get. I'll wrapping it up with this is just that I ask, uh, I've done hundreds of podcasts of highly successful CEOs, some of the biggest names uh, really in the world, in the world right now. And 
uh, I always in the show is money is blank. What does that mean to you? And what I tell you is that one of the answers that is very, very true is that money is a game. Money is a game. And just like every other game that you play, whether it be sports or you guys are in New Zealand, so whether it be rugby or cricket uh, or soccer, um, or you play a board game uh, around the family and you, you, you're playing a board game, every one of those games has rules to it. And for you to be able to win in that game, you, you got to play by the rules. If you don't play by the rules and you just make up your own rules, no one wants to play with you, uh, which means there's no re- point to have that game because you're just making up the rules as you go along. And so to understand that money is a game, therefore a game has rules to it. Therefore, if you want to have money, you have to understand the rules of money to be successful at money. That's what I would give you in a very quick, uh, you know, two, three minute overview of what money is and, and kind of how it works to a certain degree. We can dive deeper into it, but that's a 30,000 foot view of understanding that money is a game. There's rules to it. You have to apply those rules to, to succeed at it. Yeah, very, very much so. And I'm going to come back to that concept uh, in a second because sure. I, I like it a lot. Last thing I want to, I suppose, just touch on your sort of, um, yeah, some of the, the topics you talk about on your show, uh, Money Is. I was watching you speak to uh, Gary V uh, on mm-hmm. your show and you guys were, I thought it was quite insightful. Um, I think, you know, Gary was talking about how in America, and it, look, it's the same all around the world, sure. uh, it, you can't talk about religion, politics, money or sex, right? Yeah. And I thought that was, uh, it's very true. Maybe that's changing today, but yeah, that's that's true, right? Yeah, that goes back to what I was saying. Like, money's a taboo topic. Um, it gets classified with religion, politics, and sex. And yeah. if you can't, if you can't talk about money, think about this. If you can't have conversations with your friends and your uh, um, uh, family about money because it's a taboo topic, where are you supposed to talk about money with? Like, who is it then? Is it a complete stranger you're supposed to meet on the street and and start talking about money with? And so what happens is people. If you don't, you know, there's a great saying that says, uh, if you want to be a master at a subject, learn how to actually teach that subject, like know it so well that you can actually teach someone about it. And if you can't even talk about it, much less explain it to someone else, because you're never allowed to talk about it, there's no way for you to be a master at that subject. What I'll tell you though, is if you find wealthy people, this is a guaranteed fact. You find wealthy people, they talk about money all the time. When I'm with my buddies and we're, you know, I, I run a, I'm the CEO of a, of a company called Power Room, which is just high level, high net worth um, CEOs that run multi million dollar companies. And we meet every four months. But in that room, we talk about money all day long. It's, it's the, we go to dinner, we talk, we breakfast, we talk about it, breaks, we talk about it. You know, it's what we're talking about. And it's not a negative thing. It's like we're like greedy little bastards about money. It's just that's part of our normal conversation. Um, therefore, we can understand it more. It's more out in the open, and we can have authentic conversations about it. Where most people, flip side of that, think about this. When is the last time you and your friends were at dinner, and you guys were talking about money and how much you make and what you do with it and, and how much you're getting paid and where you're putting it? And that's just not a conversation that 99% of the world has. Yeah, that's but ninety percent of the world doesn't have money. Think about the one percent; <laughs> they have money, and they always talk about it. Yeah, oh, that's it's it's so true, and um, you know, the more people uh, talk about how much uh, they are earning or getting, it's it's hard to know, um, you know, whether you are potentially even being um, not necessarily ripped off by uh, whatever endeavor you're engaging in. But you know, that does have happen to, to people who are being uh, employed. Absolutely, but th- this idea of money being a game, Andrew, that is. Sure. such a good it's a good point uh, it reminds me i'm not sure if you're familiar with um there's a it's a blog post by um Pecky McCormack, it's called The Great Online Game, but that's what he's talking about. So he's talking about the idea that, you know, everything is online and digital now, so everyone has the the same opportunities as anyone else, as long as you're prepared to uh, put in the work and go and, you know, build your network um, and just make these opportunities for yourself. But, you know, Web3 and crypto kind of supercharges this game, right? So in the kind of the, you know, 10 years ago, you could get a, a, build up a, a uh, you know, an Instagram profile or a Twitter profile or a Facebook group. And you could, you know, you could start to monetize that. But with Web3 and crypto, uh, the ability to uh, monetize yourself and productize yourself is is much quicker. And yeah, just to bring it back to the 
analogy of a game. It is a game just because uh, it, it's fun to play, right? It's fun to play when you're winning. That's probably yes. a better way to say it. When, sure. you, when you're losing at it, it sucks. Um, but when you're winning, winning at it uh, and competing at it, it's very, very fun. And, and people, people love it. Um, and, but again, people struggle at it because they don't know the rules. If I, without going to a, a bunch of understanding of it, one thing I would tell you that uh, another reason that there's pieces why I love crypto is look at money and kind of maybe the three top rules here, if you will, is um, you have to know how to create it, keep it and protect it. Okay, so these are the three like like phases of the game, if you will, that you're going to go around. If you're going to go a board game and you're going in a circle, these are the three phases you go through. You have to know how to create money. You have to know how to keep the money that you create, and you have to know how to protect the money. When you find wealthy people, I promise you, I, I this is a, 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 just it's how it works. They can explain to you how they create their money, what how they're doing it, where they're using uh, businesses, they're using investments, they're using investing in crypto NFTs, but they can tell you how they're coming up with their money, they're creating it. They can tell you how they keep it. And I don't mean not keeping it like from a frugal perspective of like, oh, my whole objective is I don't spend, um, I, I, I spend so little money that I, I hate life. Like, no, man, I, I spend my money all the time. I love it. It's why I, I work so uh, hard for it. Uh, but they know how to keep what they make. And to me, that's one of the biggest secrets is knowing how to keep what you actually make. Majority of entrepreneurs get stuck in creating and they never know how to actually keep it. And the last one is protect it, which crypto is another great way um, of, of how to uh, protect my money. Meaning it's my responsibility to make sure that my money is protected and that um, other people can't get it. Other people can't take it from me. That's part of the game is knowing how to do that in a legal fashion, not 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 nothing illegal or, or shady, but there's legal processes that we all can use um, to make sure we do those three things. Yes, yes, indeed, Andrew. All right. Well, look, I'd love to hear your crypto story because I know, you know I think, you, you know, your background is uh, wealth, talking about wealth. Uh, you know, you've dabbled in real estate and look, lots and lots of other ventures. Uh, sure. But when, when did you first uh, begin to uh, learn about crypto? What was your crypto story? So um, I would say my crypto st uh, story started... I'm trying to get the exact year here. We're 2021. That was probably been probably around 2015. I can tell you this, and maybe you would know a better timing of it. Um, I started buying uh, Bitcoin at about $3,500 uh, a coin is where I finally started buying at $3,500. Um, so wherever year that was, you could go back in time and look. But I want to say it was around, around 15, 16, somewhere around that time frame. Don't hold me to it, but around there. Um, and... Again, just because I teach all about money, I mean, that's that's what I teach nonstop. And so naturally in class, what would happen is that they would ask me questions as crypto was becoming more popular and they'd ask me questions about it. And, you know, it's it's unique. And, and first, let me say this. Um, by no means do I want uh, to, to your listeners, appear that I'm a crypto expert uh, of the market. I have some buddies that eat, sleep, breathe every minute of crypto. Um, but... Um, so I don't want to. I want to come across like I'm a ginormous expert in, in, in the field, um, although I'm I'm fairly versed in it. But I look at it from a standpoint of, as I was teaching in the room, go about the story, is that people would ask me about it, and it's amazing how much people are against it uh, at first. It's like they're all like, "Oh no, no, no! It's black market. It's it's a it's scam. It's skeptical." Like you know, you always have this pushback of uh, from people, and just understand this. Inside of business, and I'm not saying it's even bad, so don't get me wrong, but I'm saying inside of business. If you study businesses and creating great magnitude of large businesses, right? One of the things that you'll find as a common denominator is they're ahead of the curve. They are leading in a industry before it was a industry. They were there early into it and, and were pushing it all the way through. And when you find those, you always find massive companies and, and wealth behind those. And I'm not saying you can't do it later as well, but an easy one to understand and, and, a little bit of American history here. In American history, in 1849, we had what was called the American Gold Rush, where everybody was started moving towards um, California on their wagons and everything in, in the 1800s, looking for gold. And in that story, it's very simple. Those who got there very first, um, before it was even a buzz, they got the most amount of gold because they were just picking it up out of the river. But those that took five years, seven years, 10 years to finally, okay, you know what? 
I think I'll maybe go, well, let's just see if, it, if I hear any more news about it. And they finally went after 10 years. When they got there, they couldn't go pick it up all the rivers. They had to go move a mountain and blow a mountain up with dynamite and reroute rivers and, and to get just to get to the point of digging for gold. And understanding in business is that way. And in crypto, NFTs, it's the same way. Um, so it's okay to be a skeptic out of the gate, but you shouldn't be negative out of the gate, right? It's okay to question, but don't be negative out of the gate. You have to be looking for opportunity. In class, where it made, where it, for me, the, the light bulb switched was when you talk about money and fiat, if you go back to the beginning of time, just think about this. Money has always changed formats. It's never been we use one thing and we only use this one thing. That is not how the history of money works. You go back to the beginning of time and it was about bartering, right? Uh, two cows for uh, five of these chickens or whatever it was. And then eventually they, they started uh, producing coins. I literally have, like I showed you, some of these old ancient coins right here. Uh, and they would weigh them. And, and on scales and, and so forth. And, and, uh, and then uh, behind me, I have super, super old money. And these are, these are American dollars, but these are old, old American dollars. And, uh, and before that, there was gold. Gold was the currency. Now think about this. Think about when everybody was using gold um, and someone came to them and said, hey, trade me all of your gold for this piece of paper right here that represents your gold. Dude, yeah. I promise you that that did not go well for a very long time because think about the mindset back in, in, in that time frame of the uh, 17, 1800s when they're like, wait a second, you want me to give you my gold and instead you're going to give me a piece of paper and it represents this gold, but it's just, you just printed this in a printing press. But eventually everybody went from gold to paper. And then I always, I always talk about from my generation, I'm 39 right now. I remember my dad, um, forever as i was a kid he would grab his wallet and his checkbook when he left the house and he used to carry a checkbook a small checkbook in his back pocket and thinking about when that first came out and to that generation that was like okay you don't even need this this paper you can actually just take a, a piece of paper write how much you're going to pay me on it and hand that to me instead and that was at first was completely like you're crazy that never no one's going to do that and then everybody did it um, so if you just study the, the form of the form of money and then we, we get into credit cards and debit cards, dude, money always changes. So to think that we're going to have these forever, that's not true. That that's you denying actual factual history to me. That's when the light bulb went off. And I said, you know what? I'm not, a, I don't know for sure if crypto is going to always be. And if every coin's always going to be, I don't know all that stuff yet, but for me to believe in the concept that crypto could very well be the form of currency. Yes, I can 100% believe in that. And that's what got me investing in it is the, the data, factual evidence of money and how it always changes. Of course, it could change again. Who, who are we to think that money's not going to change in our generation? You know, that, that's, that's very pompous of us to believe that. Yeah, the, oh, look, uh, wonderful thoughts, Andrew. And look, you're exactly right. And, you know, the, the gold analogy is, of course, very apt because one of the easiest ways to understand a Bitcoin today is, of course, as digital gold performs all the, the functions of, you know, that, that gold used to be in terms of it's a reliable store of value and it's a, uh, it's a money item that everyone wants. But, of course, Bitcoin improves on gold in uh, many uh, different ways it's much more portable uh, divisible and uh, well it's really more secure as well and I like the idea of uh, this kind of digital gold rush uh, that you're talking about and you know that's uh, very much happening as well uh, it's happening yeah. now in, in, in the metaverse and at the same time as yeah. you know people talk about you know there's the the picks and shovels idea as well so one strategy yeah. is to go after the gold and one strategy is to invest in uh, the exchanges or the companies that make the yeah. infrastructure that make it possible uh, for the gold hunters uh, to go digging yeah, it's literally just happening again. You know, the digital gold rush, it happens and it happens in business industries as well, right? Mm. Um, this one just happens to be, you know, actual currency uh, money uh, inside of the form of crypto. Um, and it's, it's a form of digital gold uh, that's there that, in my opinion, performs way better than gold. I own gold today, but my 
I enjoy waking up and, and looking at my Bitcoin uh, accounts. And yet, do they go up and down? Yes. Um, but uh, overall, my, my crypto um, is a form of an investment right now. And this is just as, again, not coming from a super high level expert. This is coming from a business owner that runs lots of companies. I invest in different types of coins. And uh, part of my philosophy right now as I'm investing into them is it's more of a straight investment. Like it is an opportunity for me to, with some of these crap coins, if you will, it doesn't mean that I can't make money off of it. It doesn't mean I'm a believer in the concept forever, but it doesn't mean that I also cannot make money, put some money into it uh, that I believe is going to go up and then get my money back out. Uh, and so I use a lot of it for straight investing right, opportunities right now. If that's right, Andrew. Well, if that's the case, then um, I'm interested in you know what would your what would your advice be to I don't know. Let's let's say someone who is quite young, maybe they're they're just finishing uh, school. Uh, they may maybe they're, they're getting their first job, so they don't really have a, a lot of wealth or savings mm -hmm. or any of that behind them. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what are what are some pieces of a pieces of uh, advice you'd give them on how to get ahead uh, and how much of that involves crypto? What what are some of the paths they could take? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, honestly, the, the, the first question answer I have to give you um, would be, you know, you're young, you're getting out of college, you're getting your first degree or your, your first job. The number one thing you have to do, you have to, there's no way around this. You're going to have to invest in yourself. Um, it is the greatest investment you can ever make. It will return you the highest dividends you'll ever, you'll ever get. The best ROI is you're going to have to put money into yourself. And by, what I mean by that is you're going to have to go and spend time. You will have to spend time uh, going to um, crypto conferences, hiring a crypto uh, um, teacher, educator, strategist, uh, along with the taking all the free data that's out there, right? All the different free podcasts and blogs and articles and websites that are out there. Uh, that that is a form of it 100 percent. but if you want to if, again if you want to get into money where you're making money understand you're going to have to pay the piper i think it's it's a false idea that you can just go out here and i'm going to wing everything and youtube everything and one day i'm going to make money hey have at it i'm not here to prove you right or wrong it just in my experience of creating wealth the fastest way to, to get to that point is investing in yourself and investing in some people that have gone there that can tell you some insights on it. So that'd be the first investment that I, that I would make. Secondly, you're asking me about the portfolio um, of investing. If it was me, and again, I am not your financial advisor, but if I was young back in my 20s again, I would be pouring the majority of money I had into crypto, NFT, and metaverse right now. That's my opinion. Again, not, not legal financial advice. But when you look at, from an investor standpoint, again, I'm taking the context of graduated college, I got my first job, I got a little bit of money to, you know, play with right now. You know, where are you going to find your um, biggest upswings uh, in the market to actually make money? Is not going to be in a freaking mutual fund making you 4% a freaking year, not including taxes and everything else you got to take out of it. It's going to be understanding, again, pay some advisors, pay some people who are very smart, do a ton of data research yourself, deep dive on it, and then start putting that money into crypto, NFTs, and the metaverse that is the future for you to ignore that is crazy crazy i can't tell you it's crazy put your, yeah. put your money there <laughs> uh look i i love it andrew and the, yeah the, the the nice thing about you know in this situation if you are if you are young you know if just out of school or even early 20s that's when you can't afford to take risks and you can't afford yes. to have a long-term time horizon the problem is you know uh, young people it's it's hard for them to have that long-term time horizon but you got to have patience but any any dollar that you put into bitcoin or, or ethereum maybe some blue chip nfts uh with a 10 year time horizon you're probably going to do well and certainly uh, going to be uh you know bonds or, or gold or having your money in in the bank um what well, nfts then andrew uh yeah mm -hmm. what's what um how how deep into nfts are you have you have you uh, made any yourself are you collecting nfts what, what, what do you like yeah so just in general uh the first thing I tell you is I think that NFTs, I think in 10 years from now, the world that we live in is going to be so different and so unique that many people are going to be left behind. And, and 
how we do things, how we interact, how we transact is going to change. Um, we, our world that we live in, it moves at such a high uh, pace. Again, just go back and watch history. If you can't tell, I enjoy history. Go back and look at history. Look at businesses. Those businesses back in the day of, I'm looking at my wall. You guys can't see it, but where I'm looking at, there's a John D. Rockefeller original autograph with the original stock certificate, Andrew Carnegie, JP Morgan. Those guys' businesses were actually moving slow compared to today, meaning they weren't dealing with what we were dealing with and we were not dealing with what they were, they are dealing with. There's two different things. Speed is what we deal with today. Uh, and so as fast as everything is changing in 10 years from now, my God, it is going to be so, so, so different in my opinion of what's going to take place. And again, I can say my opinion, but I can also just say, look at freaking history of how fast everything is changing. So first that's the thing I would tell you about NFTs and in and, and general, because I think NFTs are here to stay. The concept of NFTs, let me say that the concept of NFTs are going to be so integrated in our future. It's going to be crazy powerful of what NFTs do saying that I think that majority of nfts in my opinion right now are crap i, I it doesn't mean I, no, no, let me back up make sure you understand this i'm not saying you can't put money and make money that's not what i said i just said that i think that majority of what we're looking at as nfts right now are crap they're pump and dumps it's about um creating something creating a marketing I, idea and they go to all these different channels and discords and threads and create a buzz about a launch of an nft they launch it uh, and then, and people buy it all up and then they're, and they're in theory, hoping that the overall concept is they sell, they keep going up in value in real estate. We, we have about a billion dollars here in real estate development and, and in real estate, we call it speculative investing, um, in real estate, you're, you're buying a house in California because you think it's going to go up in the next, you know, little bit. And so you'll buy the house, even though you may lose money. Now you'll buy the house. I think a lot of NFTs projects right now are speculative investing that are pump and dumps um of the day yeah. <laughs> but the concept of nfts okay the actual concept of nft is here to stay that's my that's my opinion and theory on that yeah and very hard to disagree with you there andrew and of course this is just the problem with um new industries and uh, fast moving technology whenever you get a kind of a, a new breakthrough uh, innovative market then it attracts uh, the innovators and the technologists yeah. but it, but it also attracts uh, the speculators and unfortunately it attracts the the fast money scammers as well so there's, yeah. that's just uh, that, that's what you get with these new exponentially uh, growing industries and I guess with NFTs you know you just got to it's up to you to uh, do your research and find a community that you think has long-term potential and uh you know you you believe that the founders uh, are doing the right things for for the right reasons but it's yeah it's not always easy to uh to yeah do your due diligence uh there but um yeah i think well, i uh what i, what I was, what I was gonna say in kind of the follow-up of your question there where i put my money at right now with nfts is actually i'm gonna go back into what you talked about the uh, in the gold rush, uh, in the stores and the shovels and the, uh, the platforms. And so with crypto, I, I was an investor in crypto. So I own certain coins. I don't mind telling you what I own. If you want to talk about that. Um, I literally sometimes will still buy what I call the crap coins. Uh, I, but I understand. So we'll give us some examples, give, give us some examples of, of what, what you hold and, and what you buy more for kind of speculative purposes, Andrew. Yeah. So, uh, in crypto in general, the two, the three, I'm going to say the three that I buy a lot of, um, is, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP and XRP people have mixed emotions of good, bad, uh, et cetera. Some people hate it. Some people love it. And, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure either way right now, but I, I, you know, I got it. I was buying a, I was buying a lot at a dime. And so, Either way, right now I'm I'm okay with it, and actually love to hear your thoughts on XRP as well. But um, those are the three that I kind of hold a lot of uh, as my long-term plays. You know, every morning it, it, I check my accounts, and you know, Bitcoin goes up, Bitcoin goes down, Bitcoin goes up, uh, Ethereum goes up, Ethereum goes down. It's irrelevant to me right now because I'm not holding it for today. I'm holding it long-term to to see what what that's gonna uh, take me out to. Um, and then past that, uh, then I have my um, speculative, um, um, uh, 
where I could put money in and I can lose all of it. And I understand that. So I'm not, uh, and everybody has to have that number that they're willing to lose. Uh, and that right now, again, go to the college kid, that may be 50 bucks right now. Fine. Put $50 in, understand that you could lose all $50. Okay. That, and that's part of it. Um, but if you can do some research and find one that you feel like is going to go up uh, on a, a crap coin, the, the kind of the cool part of those is you can make uh, big, big, big numbers, returns um, off of them, uh, but you have to know when to get in and get out. And one for me that I did very, very well in was, uh, uh, what do you call it? Whether you call it uh, Dogecoin or Doggy Coin or whatever you want to call it, um, that was a, a crap coin that is an absolute, as you know, a fake Something freaking real. It's a made up as a as a joke almost. Uh, but I did I did yeah, very but, well in it. Well, uh, Dogecoin was originally intended uh, to be a kind of yeah satirical uh, joke uh, cryptocurrency. That was why the the guy that made it uh, that was his intention. But of course now Doge has really been adopted by Elon Musk, and yeah. I think Elon tweeted just yesterday that you can now buy uh, some Tesla merch using dogecoin so yeah interesting times right, so whether you get to shibu or there's there's a, a safe moon there's a yeah. handful of over there that that uh, as my and i'm gonna go back to what i said earlier i have uh my uh what i'm gonna call advisors and that i pay money to um that are crypto experts that they eat sleep and breathe this 24 hours a day um, and they understand my investment strategy they understand what i'm willing to do what i'm how i look at it how I view it and I get advice from them and I will make different decisions based on whatever they're telling me. And look, I win some, I lose some on, on that side. That's part of that game is an investment. You can do the same thing in the stock market though. I've also in the stock market, I've made money, lost some money, you know, um, yeah. that's not, that should not be your main approach though, uh, into crypto. That's just more of the throwaway, uh, you're taking a risk on it. I think the real plays and there's probably other ones out there, but I'm big in those three, XRP, crypto, and I mean, a coin, Bitcoin, and uh, Ethereum. Out of the three, I like Ethereum a lot. Um, it's hard for me to, it, that's the one I own the most of, just full disclosure, is Ethereum. And um, I I bought it at a good price, and and I hope that it continues to go up. And right now, and I, if I tend to buy more, I tend to buy more Ethereum right now um, than probably th those three uh, there. On NFT, um, I created a platform um, that we're that we're doing uh, that I'll, I'll, uh, connected to something, which I'll tell you about in a second. But that's that's my kind of uh, um, crypto um, processes, viewpoints, uh, in what I buy, uh, when I buy, etc. You will uh, tell me then about the platform. Is that are you talking about Card Champs? Yeah, Card Champs. So what's um, the, what's the idea so behind Card Champs? To me, where NFTs hold. Uh, one way that they hold massive value is a, and I think this is for the entire world really to help, not, not what I'm doing, but I think this concept is, is there to help the, can help the entire planet with money, is understanding a, a basic level of uh, UBI, a universal basic income um, of, different, of different things that are, that are going on that people can all make money off of. So in the card world, and by cards, I literally mean sports cards, baseball cards, et cetera. Um, that industry has exploded, just like cryptos exploded, just like NFTs, cards have abs It's crazy what sports cards are doing right now. And it, it, it fits in the same thing. I, I, we get to why I think, it's a, I think it's a culture shift from younger generation, from their parents and so forth. Uh, but sneakers, sneakers are crazy right now. Uh, I buy so many sneakers, it's stupid. It's a form of currency almost is sneakers right now. But the whole concept inside of it, I think with NFTs, um, the universal basic income is a huge piece of it, meaning transactional NFTs, I think are going to be very, very important for our world as a whole going forward. So all, all we did was we created a, um, a software platform um, that's built for right now. It's not a sports, it, it's not a sports card platform. It's actually a, I'm just going to prove it out with sports cards. So I built a platform for um, anybody that buys and sells uh, stuff um, that uh, they can use. I'm going to use sports cards as my proving ground. So what, what happens is um, as you take, a, you take a photo of a sports card that you want to upload it to the site because you want to buy, sell, trade with someone in New Zealand, 
when you upload that card, you take a picture of it with your iPhone or, or phone, um, one of two things happens. Either A, it says, hey, is this your card? And you click yes. And then all the data from that card is automatically uploaded to your um, your site and you can go do whatever you want to on the platform with it. It doesn't take you any time whatsoever. You just push a button. Or when you upload a card, uh, confetti falls down and it says, congratulations, you won the token. And it's NFT token. And um, to win, to claim your token, what you have to do is uh, enter in the data on that card. Because we as the platform, as a community, we all need the data on all these cards. And so if you're the first one to scan the card and then you upload the data that's on the card, it's just pop down questions, it's like 12 of them. You answer that, um, then we award you a NFT token um, that goes onto your wallet on our platform. And we built the blockchain behind it with the smart contracts. Now what happens is because you own the rights, if you will, to that card, anytime that anybody else on, the, on our platform, anywhere in the world, buys and sells that card to anybody for any amount, anytime that transaction takes place, you get paid as well on that transaction because those two people, when they scan their card, it just said, is this your card? Yes, they push one button and the work that you did was given to them for free. And so it allows um, anybody in the card world that maybe you're not a buyer or seller, but you can collect these NFT tokens on our wallet. Um, and then every month we pay them out on a digital uh, uh, ledger that we have, that we built, uh, that pays them out to. So it's allowing everybody to take place in a transaction. Everybody can make money off of it. It's free game. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to uh, be a member on the site. It doesn't cost you anything to um, upload cards to the site, but you can literally make money by allowing other people to use the time that you invested into it. And then you get paid off the NFT. And of course, you can actually then on our platform trade your NFT tokens or sell your NFT tokens to other people because that thing keeps paying out every time someone does anything. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. And I think people can go, if you want to check out what Andrew is talking about, you can go to cardchamps.com. But um, Andrew, let's go to a, a very quick break and then we will come back and we'll have some fun. Uh, we'll finish off with the very famous crypto conversation hot take around. All right, we're back, or if you're watching on YouTube, we're probably still here, but I am with Andrew Cordell. He is uh, the host of Money Is, and well, as you can probably tell, Andrew likes to talk about wealth, and yeah. Andrew, what I like to do is I like to finish each podcast with a quick round of rapid-fire crypto conversation hot takes. Are you up for it? I'm totally up for it. Hopefully I can answer all of them, but I'm 100% for it, man. Let's do it. All right, just it's just a bit of fun. Just want uh, yeah. rapid fire hot take answers. Um, Andrew, where would you say that you sit on the Bitcoin maximalist to multi coin opportunist spectrum? I do not know the answer to that one, man. That one's over my head. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> at that level. I'm just. Oh. I'm just doing it to make money right now. Yeah, it just means um, are you like a, a, f a full on Bitcoin guy or you're open to other coins? And the, uh, as, as soon as you said that you hold XRP, uh, that means you are definitely not a Bitcoin maximalist. But oh, the yeah. Next... So then, no, yeah, I would not be a <laughs> maximalist. I, I do different ones. The... I think Bitcoin's the strongest one and has the most potential. But yes. I do different. All right. Well, what would you say, Andrew, is your firmest conviction crypto opinion? For the uh, conviction? Fairest uh, conviction, yeah. I would say uh, unequivocally, I will die on this mountain. It is uh, crypto will be the way of the future for us in this world. So get on now or later. It, it's it's going to take place. Nice, nice. Uh, well, Andrew, Bill Gates famously said that we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and mm -hmm. underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. So this is pure speculation, but you know, whatever you like here, uh, what is blockchain, the metaverse, NFTs, Ethereum, what does it all look like in 10 years time? Uh, I'm a believer, I thought a little bit earlier in the show, I'm a believer that it, it is, uh, our world as we know it will be so different, uh, so, so, so different. Uh, if you were to pause your life now, go into a coma and come out in 10 years, I don't know if you would recognize uh, the world as you saw it. It would be so different. That's my viewpoint on metaverse and yeah. and NFTs and crypto. 
exponential growth. All right, well, sci-fi author William Gibson said that the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. Can you think of an example of the future being here right now, Andrew, but most people just aren't really aware of it? Metaverse. It's, it's here. You can go do stuff right now. It is here. It's not 10 years from now. It is here. Go log in. You can do stuff right now. Um, yes. So yes, the future is here. It's already happened. Uh, it's just a matter of where you get in at it. It's already here though. Exactly right. All right. Well, uh, time to zoom out. Time to get a bit weird for a second. Uh, Andrew, what do you see as the long-term future for the human race? Do you see dystopia or utopia? Mm. That's a good Or at least what what I Andrew, you're froze, frozen up. Are you still there? Are you there, Andy? Oh, there you are. Yes, I'm here. Just yeah. lost you for a bit you're there. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Welcome to Salt Lake City to New Zealand. <laughs> Maybe a boat hit our. Oh, I've lost you again. <laughs> I think it's because we started talking about the long term future for the human race. And, uh, well, that has, and that has interrupted the feed. So we seem to have lost Andrew just for the moment. Come in, Andrew. Are you receiving? No. I can see Andrew is still, he's still on the Zoom call here, but no, cannot see him, cannot talk to him. Oh, I think he's coming back. He's coming back. Andrew, you're coming back. But your mic's on mute. Oh, there he I'm, is. I'm back now, I believe. Yes, you're back. Nice. Yeah, they, they, they kicked us off, man. The, looks like the upper beings did not want us to talk about that. Definitely. Let's go to the last question then, Andrew. And that is, uh, what is your favorite science fiction book, film, TV show, or universe? Hmm. So I would tell you that I'm not a huge science fi guy, um, but... Um, the ones that I've watched, you, you, I'm going to give you this answer, but I don't know if this counts and I don't know if you, if I make it made fun of, but randomly I periodically, um, enjoy watching Harry Potter sometimes. Does that count? <laughs> well, I mean, I would say Harry Potter is probably more fantasy than sci-fi, but it's certainly sci-fi adjacent, but I love that you're a Harry Potter guy. Yeah. Sometimes man at night when I just want to comatose out. And the music, you know, has like a dark theme to it uh, yeah. and the music will come on and I will literally just go to sleep. So uh, I've seen, I've watched them 20 times. I don't know if I've ever finished one full uh, movie, but <laughs> I get out of it what I need to get out of it. I'll put it that way. That's hilarious. Did you read the books when you were younger? No, no. They came out <laughs> when I was uh, a little bit older and I, yeah. I didn't, I did not read them. But uh, I periodically have seen the bits and pieces of the movies as I fall asleep. I love it. All right. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, Andrew. Thank you very much uh, for coming on the show today. Uh, nothing else to say really except to hand the microphone back to yourself. Tell the people where they can go to uh, yeah, find all of uh, the various endeavors that you're up to. What are your platforms? Go for gold. Yeah, for sure, man. I, I'm happy to help anybody here. I, the easiest place to reach me is just on Instagram. Uh, it's my first and last name, uh, at Andrew Cordell. Uh, and if you follow me and DM me, uh, I promise I, I spend my evenings watching Harry Potter and DMing people back on Instagram until I fall asleep at night. So uh, if I can help you with anything, uh, hit me on Instagram and, and follow along, man. We got 20 different companies that we do and run, and um, I, I talk on there all the time. It's a, it's a great time, at least for me it is. <laughs> I love it. All right. Hey, thanks very much, Andrew. Uh, all the best and bye for now. Thank you.
Oh, you got... <laughs> All right, there you go. That was Andrew Cordell. Um, yeah, that was fun. Something a bit different. Very much, um, yeah, a different perspective and very much uh, fun. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, so yeah, hope to do that again uh, sometime. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, hope you learned something. Um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe to the Crypto Conversation and whatever podcast apps you are using. But for today, uh, that's us. We are out of here. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave New Coin. See ya.